How you doing guys? Big Mac Dance Call here again today, back once again with another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest review for you. Today, it's issue 17. So, issue 17 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine. What do we get inside? What could it be? Could it be these guys? Could it be the Poxwalkers? Could it be... Oh no, it's one of these, isn't it? Armoured containers. Yes, another one of these devils. I uh, really like the armor containers. I think they're just a lovely little bit of terrain and they're quite versatile. You can have them on any kind of battlefield really because they kind of give you the feeling that they're dropped into that position from um, from orbit or by a crane or whatever. And therefore they could turn up in any world that the Imperium is fighting over. Um, where sometimes Imperial ruins can look a bit out of place if, if it's supposed to be um, a Xenos world, a world controlled by the Eldar or something like that. But um, it makes sense to have the Munitorum armor containers anywhere, really. So I love that as a, as a little bit of terrain. So I think it's great that the, these are the first bits of terrain that you get for the, uh, with this um, Conquest set. Um, so the Munitorum armor containers, value of £30 for a set of three. There is a way you can get them cheaper. You can get a set of six for £50, I think, if you buy them as part of, um, I think it's a Munitorum... Kill zone um, for the skirmish game kill zone. If you buy the Munitorum kill zone, then you get I think you get six of them and you get maybe two sets of galvanic servo haulers, which are also about £25. It might just be one set of galvanic servo haulers, that'd make more sense. Because then that's uh, around £85 worth of terrain if you were to buy it all separately, plus a gaming mat um, for £50. So it's a it's a bargain if you get the kill zones rather than um, if you buy a set set of three of these which is 30 pounds like i said so uh if you divide it by three because there's three that you get in this standard set of 30 pounds then uh, it's around a 10 pound value there are ways you can get them cheaper like i've said but we're saying it's five 10 pounds magazine cost eight pounds so you're saving two pounds there if you were to buy them direct from games workshop of course as is always the case with me what's inside the mag let's have a look so the chaos gods and promises on the front munitorm armor container which is what you get the Chaos God Nurgle, new deployment rules. So let's see if that's uh, covered well enough, in my opinion. This is, of course, all my opinion and not fact. <laughs> so onto the Chaos Gods. We've got one page of fluff there. Tells us um, a little bit about where the Chaos Gods reside and um, goes on to... It just gives us a, a little bit of narrative there as well. And then um, turning the page, it gives us a brief insight into each Chaos God here in these uh three four paragraphs maybe and then it gives us a summary of the information that it gives us there in these four boxes so i'm not really sure it needs to give us both i feel like they could, could have give us some other information about the chaos gods maybe something like the uh if we've not already had it i don't think we have but it could have given us like the sacred numbers of each chaos god or something like that um or what their main troop choice is so for nurgle it's the plague marines um, but for other gods, it's uh, different different ones. And then it goes on to explain a little bit about Nurgle on this page. And the following page as well tells us a little bit more about Nurgle. So it's only really two pages of Nurgle there. Considering it tells us on the front, we're going to learn about the Chaos God Nurgle. And it only gives us two pages. I'd say it's a little bit misleading if you're hoping for fluff. Uh, for me, I'd want more fluff dedicated to Nurgle there. Um, but, you know, four pages of fluff, and then it's on to this sort of semi-fluff page. Um, I say semi-fluff because it's just a list. It's a list here of the defenders of Ultramar. So when the Nurgle invasion of Ultramar, the Ultramar system was happening, um, these, these are the chapters of Space Marines here and the Imperial forces that were defending Ultramar. Those forces of Imperial Guard of... Um, Imperial Knights that are garrisoned on various worlds of Ultramar um, were the defenders of Ultramar and also some other Space Marine chapters, uh, various Space Marine chapters um, in smaller numbers that were sort of nearby to the system came to defend Ultramar as well. And the Grey Knights, um, who normally fight demons, they would have appeared to face off against um, the demons of Nurgle, of course. And the Sisters of Silence, uh, the unknown uh, it says unknown numbers of them were there, basically. This is Silence and Grey Knights. Supposedly, um, in the lore of Warhammer 40,000, the Grey Knights uh, sort of whispered about 
and you, you you know the sort of people think they're a rumor because not many survivors of battles there aren't many survivors of battles that they've fought in basically because they like to be quite secretive and um if there's a if the grey knights take part in a battle and the only other imperium representatives in that battle were say imperial guardsmen now there's billions and billions of imperial guardsmen in the galaxy so they they can afford to just wipe out a, a regiment of imperial guardsmen because they see them as kind of expendable and um, the general foot slogging troops of the imperial of the imperium are seen as expendable it's quite a ruthless um regime the imperium of mankind so there's just a nice little extra bit of fluff for you that you're not getting in here about the Grey Knights. Um, and then, it, yeah, it goes on to explain um, more key key members of, uh, like the Primarch, R Rebute Gilliman, um, Ultramines, Nova Rumines, Silver Eagles, Howland Griffins, Lebators, and so on and so forth. And then it does the same on the next page for the Nurgle forces that were invading the system. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. Um, I think it's kind of like, I don't know, I do like this sort of thing. Um, because if you're looking at, if you, if you go back to previous issues where they've given us various vectorums of the Death Guard, um, the Death Guard children of bright, children of blight rather, befoulers, rot reapers, uh, blight guard and so on and so forth, it gives you all those, we've, we've seen colour schemes for them in the past, then if you did want to go with a different colour scheme to the one um we're getting fed to us from the death guard side of things which is typical death guard the actual death guard color scheme rather than the expanded legion where they've all got different slightly different color schemes some are cream um some are steel colored and rust um then these are the forces sort of taking part in the campaign that we're seeing flow through the narrative of the course of this magazine subscription so um it tells you that you know which forces are actually there if you didn't want to go with ultramarines you might want to go with nova marines and we might have had a color scheme for that in the past so it tells you you know you can paint it in any of those colors if you want to stick to the narrative um but i feel like this is to someone new to the game new to the universe i feel like this is um a little bit of a wasted page really and the previous page as well the one concerning the imperium forces because although lists like that, I think are nice when you get really getting deep into the fluff, we're still at kind of an introductory stage, I'd say. Um, but that might be me wanting to take it too slowly with regards to fluff, because there's so much depth in the fluff, uh, in the lore. I, I always say fluff in these videos. I'm sure you've picked up by now that I say that a lot. Um, but when I say fluff, I just mean lore. There's so much depth in the lore that I feel like chucking a page like this at you is kind of a waste. I feel like you could go for something that's a bit more of a hook, you know, that captures your imagination a bit more. Even just another short story like we've seen in previous issues, um, rather than these lists of forces that have taken part in actions. And then it's on to how to build. So we get six pages, six page, well, four pages of solid law, and then two pages of lists. And then on to how to build, where we get how to build armoured containers. Now, you may remember, um, I think we've got armoured containers in issue 13. And we built them in that issue as well, I think. So we know how to build them already. However, they've put this page in here. We turn the page. We see they've given us one, two, three, four pages of how to build Munitorum armoured containers. And then it gives us how to build the barrels on the final page as well, just there. Uh, just put the two halves together. I feel like, and this goes for the painting section as well, I feel like they could have said, refer back to issue, I think it was issue 13 where they showed us how to build them and issue 14 or 15 where they showed us how to paint them. It could say, refer back to those um, particular issues in order to follow the instructions on how to build them. Um, if they wanted to, they could have put a sprue in on this page and uh, I don't know, just a picture of the completed containers on this page because that's basically what they did with the last page, complete containers there. Um, and then the painting section. There is a difference in the painting though, in this, in this issue. It's the first step is blue rather than black, but every single other step after that, from the dry brush of the blue, we use the gray, the, the uh, Mechanicus standard gray, 
to the gold on the eagles, to the silver on the control panels, to the washers, to whatever. Every single step is the same apart from that first step of painting it blue instead of black. They could have given us a page of um, a picture of it lovely painted there like they do. And they could have said, um, follow, um, first step, paint it blue, turn the page, next step, follow the instructions from issue um, 14 or whatever the painting instructions were. It was either 14 or 15, I can't quite remember. Um, but you can't guarantee that everybody's going to have issue 13 and 14 and 15. So I, un I do understand why they've gone through it step by step again, but it just seems like a waste of a page. We've got four pages of how to build, six pages of how to paint, and it's uh, that's 10 pages of a magazine, which is 30 pages or something, I think it is. So it's, it just seems like a bit of a waste there to me. Um, it's less than 30 pages of magazine. So I feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity to get more get more lore in there or get more um, get a greater gameplay section in there or something like that. But I understand why they do it, you know, to, to make sure people aren't missing out. People who haven't had previous issues perhaps aren't missing out. Um, and then it's on to... You know, the, the, onto the last page there where they show you it's painted up blue. It's a nice paint job again with the um, Mechanica standard grey dry brush. It works quite well, um, the same as the black. And then you've got the uh, ammo crates there and it's going to tell us how to, it does say it on one of the previous pages, uh, this page here. And it told us in a previous issue as well, it'll tell us how to paint these barrels up in a future issue. Now the next issue, we're getting two more paints. So I suspect the barrels will be painted when we get the next issue. Okay, so it's onto the um, fire zone secured. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a uh, synopsis here of the scenario. As the atmosphere of Corvon 2 begins to loom in the viewports of the honor of Ultramar, Death Guard and Ultramarine, Death Guard and Ultramarines battle to control key locations on the cargo deck. With these positions secure, they will be able to run, rain down fire on their enemies. Um, so it's just setting the scene nice and quickly there. There's not much of um, much of a little fluff section in there for me to read out. It was just that little bit, and then there's a Vox transmission at the end. Um, but it just seems uh, it seems the pushing that to one side for this issue, uh, despite the fact that they gave us four pages of lore about Nurgle. Um, but yeah, it just seems like they're pushing the narrative aspect of play to one side in order to tell you about deployment zones in a bit more detail, really. Um, it's saying there's a three-inch deployment zone at the Death Guard end, a three-inch deployment zone at the Ultramarine end. There's objective markers in the middle, and it says set up your um, armored containers nearest the objective on the on the the battle map that you've already got with the armored containers um, pictured on it. Set them up on the containers nearest the uh, the um, deployment zones, not the objectives. So, and then it tells you what to take. Take a blight hauler. Five Plague Marines, 12 Pox Walkers, and for the Space Marines, take five Intercessors, three Aggressors, Primaris Librarian, and two Hell Blasters. Um, in my expert's opinion there, I'd say that's weighted in favour of the Space Marines, but I might be surprised there, because the Death Guard can be quite hard to take down sometimes. It's just, if you choose your targets well with the Space Marines, then I'd say yeah, the, the, it's slightly in their favour. However... The objective isn't to wipe out your opponent. It is control an objective marker. You get one victory point. At the end of the game, uh, if you end the game with a model in the enemy's deployment zone, you get one victory point. So if the Ultramarine player manages to get a model up here, let's say the Librarian manages to get into the Death Guard deployment zone, they get a, another point. Um, and each enemy unit removed from play is one victory point as well. And it, does it say how many battle rounds it takes place over? Uh, I can't see that it does. Uh, five battle rounds, it says in there. It takes place over five battle rounds. So you've got five turns, basically, to try and complete as many of those objectives as possible. I think five turns is enough to wipe out three. Um... Oh, actually, there's a blight hauler on the Death Guard side, isn't it? That's particularly tough, and it's got particularly good weaponry. So, you know, maybe it's not as a... It's probably not as one-sided as I uh, first gave the impression there. Uh, but anyway, then it talks on the next couple of pages about um, deployments. It tells you uh, in more detail really, without telling you any more information, just goes into a little bit more depth uh, about a Space Marine deployment zone and a Death Guard deployment zone here. And it just tells you why we have them there really. 
and it says don't forget to set up your models in a unit within two inches of each other so they have to be in that unit co unit coherency which has been mentioned in a previous issue and then it explains it step by step how we set up in for this mission so for this mission we have a three inch deployment zone for the space marines uh, one player wins the roll off they deploy a unit first then your opposition deploys a unit and then back to the space marines back to the death guard um, but some missions will require you to set up all of your forces and then your opponent deploys all of their forces. And then onto the uh, final page here, it just tells you how to place objectives. So in this case, your objective marker must be at least three inches from, um, you do, from both deployment zones. So the ultramarine player places the objective marker there. Uh, that's a three inch line there. And a three inch line on that side as well. So your objective ends up there from the ultramarine player. And then the Death Guard player has to place their objective marker and they have to place it three inches from a deployment zone and at least three inches from the Ultramarine's objective marker. So they do, they stick it there. And then that's about it for the issue, really. It's not a content-heavy issue, I'd say, despite the fact that the, they're giving you four pages of law and then two extra pages of list law. Um, I think the list laws are... It's a bit early to be introducing law like that, perhaps, but maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's uh, more to other people's tastes. I like that kind of law, but more if I'm reading it in a campaign book, um, Vigilus Defiant campaign book, something like that, for example. Um, so it just seems a little bit like the wasting pages um, in this issue for me. Um, but I would say that because I like, I like the law, I like the narrative feel. Um, that we've had in some previous issues, to be fair. It's not like they're skimping on law across the whole uh, range of magazines. We're up to issue 17 now. There's going to be some issues where it's a bit more build-heavy, a bit more paint-heavy. Um, not everybody's tastes the same as mine, so some people will want more detail on the building and more detail on the painting. Whereas I don't feel like, although you might want that, you could get by without that, I'd say. Um, you, you probably don't need your handheld quite as much as the holding it by issue 17 in terms of building and painting because it's not that complex of stuff they're asking you to do and they've covered it in previous issues. However, if you're not subscribed to the magazine, if you just pick it up week by week like me and somebody gets to the news agent before you and you don't manage to get a certain issue, then you wouldn't be able to refer back to that issue if they wanted you to do so in a future issue. So I do again understand why they're still having the four pages, how to build the six pages, how to paint, but it's just a little, um, little frustrating. They could put the how to build and how to paint available on the website or something like that as a PDF download. Um, you can find how to build Munitorum armor containers um, and various Games Workshop kits on the internet. Uh, the, it's not strictly legal, but it's, you know, I think a lot of the time with the how to build stuff, Games Workshop sort of turn a blind eye. It's not like their rules where they, they like to crack down on people sharing the rules for free. But um, yeah, it's less of an issue than sharing the rules or their novels for free. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go doing it yourself, by the way. I wouldn't do that at all. Um, Anyway, so it's a it's a, an okay issue. We're getting decent value with the ten pounds Munitorum armor containers, um, but let's look to what's in the next two issues coming up. So in the next issue, issue eighteen, uh, we're getting Rakar flesh base color and uh, Mephisto red, a first first proper ready color that we're getting. I suspect the barrels will be painted in Mephisto red. I imagine as well they might dry brush them in the Rakarth flesh because it's quite a, a pinkish sort of flesh colour, a pinkish greyish flesh colour. Um, so I think that'll work quite well if you dry brush the container, uh, the barrels rather, with the Rakarth flesh and then uh, pick out the details, there's Aquilas on there and stuff, pick out them in gold. Um, and maybe use a little bit of silver on the edges to make them look a bit battered and worn. And then issue 19, <gasps> look at these beauties here. So this is Lord Feltheus and his cohort. Um, that is a £25 kit that coming in a £7.99 uh, magazine. So that's going to be great value, uh, that issue. Assuming you get them all in one, and I'm pretty sure you will do. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't 
I, would, I doubt they'd have them all on the front like that um, and all featured there like that. But next issue as well, we're getting a, a new playmat. So we, uh, we've had all our battles so far on the Honor of Ultramar on the cargo deck there. The next issue, from what I understand, it's um, similar to the um, Realm of Battleboards, the Sectum, Sectum Munitorum Realm of Battleboards, Sectum Mechanicus. I can't, can't remember what they're called, but it's the sort of Imperial Gothic street layout. Um, and from what I understand, it's quite a big battle mat as well. It's not a full size six foot by four foot. Um, it's, but it's bigger than the one you get in the first strike box set, which I think is either 22 inch by 22 inch or two foot by two foot. Um, it's bigger than that one. I think maybe it's twice the length of that one. So it'll be either two foot by four foot or 22 inches by 44 inches, something along those lines. Um, and I imagine over the course of the subscription, we might get two more of them and then we could put them all together and make a roughly six foot by four foot, um, table to play on but that's just me speculating of what's to come um, that's what we know is to come in the next couple of issues and then issue 20 as i understand it is a munitor armor container the third one in the set and that'd be the first quarter of the subscription done or the uh the magazine magazine collection done at least so it's uh it's going nicely so far i'll have a summary of um the miniatures coming up for you in the next week or so of what we've had so far um, if you've not already seen it, check out my video from last Thursday. I'll pop a link up here for you. Um, and that's just summarising the value of the miniatures we've received so far up to issue 20. Um, so stay tuned for more, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.